Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another live stream of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, and let's start here with just making sure that the new expansion didn't secretly unlock. I'm fairly certain it hasn't. So, I doubt the expansion's gonna happen tomorrow on Thursday. I'll kind of keep an eye out for it, but not by much. Uh, so it's probably gonna happen Tuesday. That would kind of make sense. It, it seems that would be right in line with a week after the last uh, big live streamer was given the early information to announce all the new cards. Uh, so theoretically out there there is a way to see all the cards or all the cards they pretend like there exist. Maybe there are a few that haven't been mentioned. Uh, but it's not in the system that doesn't make a very good YouTube video until I can get to The point where I can see it in crafting mode and look at each card in order That's the point when I can start understanding it um, We have to play shaman and we have to win games with Paladin which gives us an opportunity to play more odd Paladin So let's just hop in here and start playing uh, and try to actually win So at the end of last recording my alt tab was not working It seems to be the game. I'm covering Castlevania uh, Lord of Shadows Mirror of Fate HD, which is way too long of a name um, Seems like it's doing something with the alt button. I don't know why uh, So Yeah that that seems to be the case um i'll probably be done with Cas the castlevania game in the next couple of days i just no, finished act two so and i really felt like it was only going to have two acts and i kind of hoped it would have only one act uh, a lot of the second act had very little fighting in it, which was crazy because you're playing as a rather pow powerful character. So, yeah, that didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, the way things are being broken up and the, how small the level and the castle designs are, since they are broken up by three chapters, three acts, uh, it would have made a lot more sense to have just one very big castle which is what I believe the experience has been for most Castlevania games so it really feels like uh, Mirror Fate is just this really underfunded Konami game is is all I can guess is that they just were uh, Konami did not care about it they they underfunded it they handed it to somebody who uh, I don't believe has the skill now there is a thought I had that since the first Lord of Shadows game which was a triple-a action-adventure 3d game that really wasn't in line with any of the Castlevania games up until that point uh, but that game had Sir Patrick Stewart in it I'm wondering if this was a case of uh, the If it, if it might have been a case of them spending too much money on that specific uh, license of, uh, and paying of Patrick Stewart that that uh, that took money out of the budget for Mirror Fate uh, that's almost an impossible guess to make though because you're assuming that any of the money or profits or losses from Lord of Shadows 1 would go into any kind of similar or connected budget uh, for the Mirror Fate sequel, which was which is unlikely. If anything, I imagine uh, this is more of a case of of just a lack of care because it's a DS game and even as a DS game it's not really using doesn't feel like it's using any of the elements of the DS well 
and it just makes the game and its controls feel very wonky. Um, anyone in their right mind would have rage quit, and I nearly rage quit recording Mirror Fate. Uh, but I made it to the third act, and now I'm kind of stuck because I probably should just see it through to the end. Hmm. Individual draw a card. Let's not let him do that. Justice. I suppose we have a decent amount of um, of news, so we should cover that. The other game I'm playing slash not playing is this Korean mobile game I'm trying out called Destiny Child, which is basically a bunch of anime girls in slightly lewd costumes. The the American version is slightly censored, more censored than the Korean version, but it's not like. Uh, but I installed a patch to show the Korean versions, and it's it's really just the Korean version show, shows on a handful of characters some more uh, more skin and and maybe some pants underwear pantsuit uh, stuff, and that and that is really the only major difference there. Uh, for justice so the the game itself is is a well, I guess call what they call gachapon game where you're trying to collect all these creatures it feels a lot like Tower of Saviors when I was playing that which is kind of just a puzzles and dragons clone the difference is destiny's child destiny child is is more about showing anime girls it's it's more about not really caring if you play the game at all uh, you literally in the main gameplay mechanic don't have to play at all you can put it into full auto mode and it will just play and you can even speed it up to three times speed which was I believe one of the factors that eventually caused me to give up on um, on Tower of Saviors is that I was just not getting anywhere, there was nothing to do, and it was taking way too long. Here, I can literally leave the game running overnight, and that's what I did last night, is I just had it grinding automatically, don't have to do anything, don't have to worry about it, because it's so well programmed to just run itself, which is great for somebody who has has arthritis in their fingers. There's, there's no swiping, there's no tapping, there's, there's no clicking if you don't want it. If you do want it, then it auto attacks by default so you can't stop that from happening but otherwise it is 100 percent you can swipe to use special skills and then you swipe you tap at a specific place to unlock a different special skill that's even more special and so there's like special skill a super special skill and every time you do the super special skill you get a percentage towards a frenzy mode, which is uh, then just lets you tap uh, as fast as possible to uh, to try and um, do as much damage as possible. And I do believe in frenzy mode, you can only tap 69 times and then it stops. Uh, but the game isn't as lewd as you would think. In fact, it's kind of more like a teenage anime game because there's a lot of uh, cutscenes in it and comedic little episodes of of uh, a basic ripoff of the devil is a part timer concept mixed in with uh, there's another anime series. Um, I, I think it's called Conception. Oh, oh my God. Um, and you get these childs, which is probably a terrible translation, um, that are born from you playing as this lazy, low-level demon making a pact with humans, and you don't even really deliver, have to care about if you deliver on the pact or not. It just happens, and then there's this kind of anime character uh, child that comes out of nowhere, and you have to you have to defeat them. Uh, in kind of like a Persona Mind Palace fights them and several other 
Uh, what's really cool about it is it just keeps going. Like, there, there's a reason why you would want to actually have all of your characters, uh, as many children as possible, even though that you can only have five on a team, there's a whole section where you, you can use, uh, once those five die, you keep going, and you're just, it's just this gauntlet where you want to, you keep going until you've killed every single character you've unlocked and, and done, and there's all kinds of upgrades systems and uh, and all kinds of rewards uh, it's it's a weird game certainly though because you're you're doing a lot of different things but a lot of them don't actually require you to play the game um, but then you can speed everything up so I imagine I'll probably play it for a couple of weeks and then get bored with it um, and because I'll be like all oh, right I've maxed out as far as I can go and I I'm not getting enough stamina uh, but it is possible that that actually goes the other direction and instead I'm able to log in every day set everything up the way I want I probably log in every night actually uh, set it up how I want have it just run over night uh, and um, the battle. The battle. see how the much battle. progress can be made every uh, every night for duty for hmm. justice Job's done. um yeah but there is also danger in playing a new cell phone game that it will just take away from my time as far as playing footage that's supposed to be on this channel. That being said, this is the year in which I just do whatever I want to do and take it easy, so uh, I'm going to stick to that idea as long for a while or more. It's not like YouTube's paying me or anything. Um... Reporting for duty. Ah, uh, this sucks. For the whole battle! The battle! And that. And that. And that. Reporting for duty. The light protects me. Job's done. Uh, I wouldn't recommend Destiny Child though for anybody who's out and about. Um, I just saw a YouTube video and another YouTuber talking about it and it interested me. Uh, and the first thing he said is, is that the, the very first screen shows a a slightly lewd picture on the on the screen and you have to tap it. It has the live 2D feature too, which is not programmed as well as it should be so you have these 2d anime characters slightly bouncing back and forth all the time and i turned the, the intensity down on that to zero and it's still way too high um, um, so yeah you, you you definitely would be caught looking at some very large breasted anime characters uh, if, if, if you were riding on a bus or a train playing this game. Uther versus Rexa. Let's go hunt again. I will. And that, that's not going to fly, particularly in the United States. Although, you know, you could get away with doing that pretty easily because people mind their own business in, like, Japan and, and uh, Korea. Uh, Survive. So, the big story on Monday was Borderlands 3 and just me trying not to be hyped about Borderlands 3. And they said there would be more information on the 3rd, and there were rumors that it was going to the Epic Store, and it's going to the Epic Store for 6 months. Uh, not a year long, uh, 
but a six month exclusive exclusivity period uh, meanwhile you can play it on consoles also so yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Xbox one and uh, PS4 um, it's coming out September 13th which is a couple of weeks before the 10 year anniversary for Borderlands as a series um, and yeah that is that they they pretty much uh, Randy bitch for a gearbox pretty much figured they could hype people up and then three days later announce it's an epic store exclusivity and then bury that in other news uh, because also uh, like the game of the year version of Borderlands 1 is out today so uh, at the exact same moment that people would be on the line typing about how they hate the epic store uh, a lot of people are actually just playing the remastered version of Borderlands 1 so they've they've done a good job here um, And, and I, that's what I figured they were gonna do. Like, they were gonna get people super hyped about it. I I figured they might take a little bit longer to sneak in the Epic Store exclusivity, because it, there there's quite a lot of long time here uh, between now and the release for people to growingly be. <laughs> upset about the epic store exclusivity now when i say people i mean real people people i'm gonna deperson all video game mainstream video game journalists here in this in a second uh, i mean real people people that pay for their video games people that actually care the mainstream video game journalists on the other hand are pissed off about the fact that borderlands looks like borderlands <laughs> Uh, that it is just more Borderlands, which is kind of all anybody ever wanted. Uh, like, it, it's not... Uh, the, the, a lot of mainstream journalists are upset that it's, it's not taking concepts that, frankly, didn't interest me as a Borderlands fan from things like Destiny and or or add a battle royale mode or or just change the game completely uh, and it, i want to make it kind of clear tinfoil hat theory here this actually isn't a tinfoil hat the the same exact phrases and words are being said by multiple supposedly independent video game journalist companies which is to say we know for a fact it has been proven that almost all the mainstream video game journalists are in a discord or in a chat log in something uh i forget what it actually was uh Oh, who knows what it is now but they're talking to each other and they're deciding what the narrative is and so they got together and they decided that their narrative was going to be oh, we don't like Borderlands like we don't like what Borderlands was uh, which means they're not really giving their opinions anymore they're just touting this party line uh, some of that may be because they're all SJWs and they're turning against Randy Pitchford, probably for good reason. Frankly, everybody should have been against Randy Pitchford for a long time, but he's not really the person creating Borderlands anyway. So, uh, so there, so there's a mad dictator out there that owns a company that really can't be ousted, really can't be put in a corner. I'm just gonna... Uh, do I want to play ranked here and risk my ranked winnings or do I want to just keep on playing ranked? Hmm. Let's get the daily quest done first on casual. Uh, yeah, Randy Pitchford 
basically owns the gearbox. I, it's a private company. I'm fairly certain. There's no way to oust him short of uh, literally having him thrown in jail, um, and that's not likely to happen. Uh, so, like, unless he unless he kicks the bucket, unless he passes on, unless he retires. All you can do is exact a certain amount of influence, and he's not the type of person to be influenced. If he was the type of person to be influenced, he wouldn't be doing uh, magic tricks in the middle of the presentation. Now, maybe that, in this instance, the magic trick was simply for him stretching for time because they were having technical difficulties. That might have been the case, uh, uh, but... Uh, He's certainly done magic tricks before, and he certainly was on the stage in the first place, which, with all the negative stories around him, uh, a different presenter would have been perfectly fine. Uh, for all the cosplayers that cosplay um, Borderlands, why not have a professional cosplayer come out and say and uh, and be the presenter if you could find somebody who could cosplay and be a presenter or even put Randy Pitchford in cosplay to, to kind of hype it up maybe that's a little unprofessional I don't know it doesn't seem like Randy wears suits and ties anyways uh, but yeah you could have done had some other presenter somewhere I don't know who that would be uh, and that inherently points to the fact that that is a dictatorship of the company is that who is the vice president of Gearbox we don't know I don't know if there even is anything who is the person below him who's, who's any other main person that could be named I cannot literally name anybody at Gearbox at all uh, the the head of publicity, the marketing director, the senior programmer, any of them, like any of those people, could could have been given a little spotlight and come on the stage and talk about how hard they've been working on the game and things like that, at least for part of the time. Uh, but no, it's always Randy, Randy, Randy. He must have all the spotlight. He must have all the. Uh, adoration uh, for whatever little adoration you're actually getting let's see sounds my guy I'll silence yours hmm. I played out of order there clearly yeah so yeah, Gearbox, I, I guess what they're going with is the idea that if they announce the Epic Store exclusivity now, almost certainly by the time September happens, there will be so many other instances of games coming out on the Epic Store that people will sort of have forgotten that, 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 that Borderlands is an exclusive, and, or people would have already just gotten over it. Uh, or, perhaps... The truth of the matter might be that very few people are going to play Borderlands 3 on PC anyways. Uh, a lot certainly has changed for since Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel though. Uh, my introduction to Borderlands 1 was on the Xbox 360. So, but I have long since moved to PC. I don't know how many people moved to PC with me. I bet not as many as I think. So... Maybe it doesn't matter that the first six months are only on Epic Store. Maybe they can easily handle that. The The other question to ask is, was this really a decision by Gearbox or was this a decision by 2K? It very well might be a case that this was a 2K choice uh, to... To go Epic Store exclusivity, uh, and if I were a actual video game journalist who contacted video game companies 
instead of kind of just a rebroadcaster of, of other people's journalists, uh, I would send two questions, two emails I'd send. Uh, I would send, was it Gearbox's decision for to, go, to be published on the Epic Store? Uh, or And then I would send to Gearbox, was it... Uh, 2K's decision to be public to, to be published on the Epic Store. That way, if 2K comes back and says it, it was our decision, they're taking control. If they push the blame onto Gearbox, we we then might get a different story from the other people. Um, the right response there would be for Gearbox to not respond at all, or or say. All publishing decisions are based are the publisher's decision, uh, in 2K to say yes, it was our decision in in uh, cooperation with Gearbox. Uh, like the Epic Store exclusivity really should be 2K's decision. So if there's anybody to blame here, it it, it should be 2K. And I don't know if that really matters much because you are in this position where um, where if Borderlands doesn't succeed Borderlands 3 doesn't succeed uh, Gearbox doesn't really have a lot to save them uh, I don't think Gearbox can make a Borderlands uh, 3.5 or or just continue working on basically nothing and publishing other people's games for four years to to make a borderlands 4 and hope that borderlands 4 is better and there is something in borderlands 3 that might get annoying and might get repetitive we, we know that there's going to be a lot of the cult of the vault religion stuff in there which Maybe this even boils down into the lawsuit. If all of Borderlands 3 is this, like, 200-hour atheist screed, where it's just anti-religion, 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 it might explain why the legal counsel is not super happy uh, what, what is accusing Randy Pitchford of attacking him for his religious beliefs uh, of being a Christian. Uh, or even worse what if the logo and everything that I'll show later are a direct attempt and slap in the face to that guy their, their former lead head, head counsel uh, that, that might show up in court proceedings but even if it has nothing to do with that, there, there's definitely a cult of the vault and a lot of religious things that's that's being implied here. The best case scenario, and what I'm kind of hoping, is that this is the general concept and the idea that gets introduced, and then it doesn't really get touched on too much. Um, it is kind of what you needed to have happen, though, also because there already was this kind of cult of personality around Handsome Jack, and Handsome Jack certainly uh, wanted to be a god. So whoever the bad guys are, if uh, which I've heard, oh, maybe no. there really that isn't going to be too much Malia. focus on on having one singular bad guy. Uh, that might just be speculation. Uh, but yeah, whoever the bad guys are will almost certainly be the leader of some cult uh, otherwise uh, you you run into some basic things some burnout questions certainly about um, about Borderlands is it going to play well and be well received is it going to feel outdated is it going to be uh, feel like it's just too similar to the previous games I think most players who have played Borderlands have not recently played Borderlands. Um, that being said, with the Game of the Year editions coming out and such, uh, right now, by the time people are... Oops. Actually, this will still work. 
Uh, by the time people are ready to play Borderlands 3, a lot of people may go through a full gameplay of the Game of the Year version of Borderlands 1. They may go through a full gameplay of the Game of the Year updated version of Borderlands 2. Uh, so they might be close to 400 hours into Borderlands before they even start Borderlands 3. Uh, which, that's... That's dangerous, certainly. There, there's definitely some danger in burning out your audience before your new product is even available. Uh, we'll talk about Borderlands a little bit more, but let's let's start going on this. I hope the web peak works. It should. Uh, Techcraft has an article: Embrace your inner monster in Darkborn. That certainly looks like monster. Uh, Darkborn is the one where you play as like a gar gargoyle or a dragon or something, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different game, actually. So there's this trailer. Let me look at this trailer and see if I can get some more information. This is kind of a hype article. Yeah, this was... This is that game where you play as something, some kind of monster that's a little nondescript. It's like a gargoyle. The idea of telling a tale where you play as the monster, slightly interesting, but could just be more a walking simulator than you, anything else. You. Maybe a puzzle platformer, maybe a stealth game. Dead. Tell um, no tales. The reason why there aren't a lot of games where you play as character as monsters is it makes them difficult to relate to. And in this game it feels like you might very well be playing as a um, a monster that does not have the capability of speaking and you're playing a stealth like gameplay and it looks like other versions of your species are being being crucified and executed yeah Winning, which is nice, but I'm supposed to be playing cards, which isn't happening, but whatever. Hmm. And in this trailer, like, you killed one person and then immediately grew like three times as big. You, you killed and ate one person. A lot of this game looks a lot like playing it, that game Prey uh, in just kind of a Viking settings. Uh, I'm gonna have have to see some more more content, quite frankly, before I'm sold on this game. Uh, let's see. Gamma Sutra has an article, Cloud Streaming Startup Polystream, that's $12 million in funding. I don't think we need to go any further than that. Um, though, the title says it all. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article, Get a Job, Zenimax Online Studios is hiring a senior combat designer. Almost certainly that is for... Uh, for Elder Scrolls Online, unless they're trying to redo Fallout 76. Um, this job is in Cockeysville, Maryland, which is not a location that you often hear of video game jobs listed. Hmm. Uh, let's see. 
TechRaptor has an article, Unbound Worlds Apart sends players into the shadows, coming to Kickstarter this May. So it's a game that's not even on Kickstarter yet. So that is a hype before the hype style of game. I'm reading the update log on the scripting program I'm trying to use to automate uploading videos and it sees seems like they're slowly adding adding features bit by bit I every month you you doesn't you. I don't know how well it's gonna work it's kind of it's it's kind of a waste of time right now to even bother with trying to to program that and get it to work because at the current time the where everybody's being forced to the YouTube studio beta and until that is finished being made Anything I program would just have to get reprogrammed again. Uh, let's see, we already kind of talked about this, but GameIndustry.biz uh, has an article, Sega Mega Drive Mini will launch September 19th. Sonic, Echo, Toe Jam, and Earl will be among the 40 games built into this $80 retro console. I hadn't heard the price until this point. Okay. What can we do? We can play a bunch of these and take this and then play this. I may have lost though. Like he, I think he's got enough damage. Um, I didn't have enough. If I was at 10 mana, I probably could have won. Nah, I couldn't have won even then. Oh well. Just playing no shame in class cards. Uh. I believe at $80, the Sega Mega Drive Mini is actually more expensive than the NES Classic. It almost certainly is more expensive than it is it would cost right now to buy one. Uh, at 40 games, you're probably getting a little bit more games than what you would get from the uh, NES Classic or Super NES Classic. But the quality of those games are highly questionable uh, you can easily add six games to the list because if you just have sonic one sonic two sonic three and then sonic and knuckles one sonic and knuckles two sonic and knuckles three uh that's six games with with very little variety between them um and then you can just fill it up with a bunch of lesser known, lesser cared about Sega products. So I'm, we're still kind of waiting for the full list of games to come out and I think they're probably intentionally withholding that information to stretch this a little bit longer. Okay. Our first game to look at on Steam today, hopefully the web peak is working, it should be. Serious Sam Tormental, which is from Crow Team, although it seems to be half developed by a company called Gungrounds. So it's a top-down twin-stick shooter. Normally I would I would say no, I don't want to play a top-down twin-stick shooter, 
this falls under the category of at some point I might decide to play all the Serious Sam games and so I would put this in here where I might play it for like five minutes. So knowing that and knowing that this is early access and knowing that this is $11.99 I'll put this on the wish list probably more than the fall list because I always exclude early access games from the wish list anyways before I start buying anything. Uh, this doesn't look terrible as a top-down twin stick shooter anyways uh, most of them do uh, the bigger question certainly will come up uh, as far as why would I really will I really ever actually decide to cover all of the uh, serious sand games or is my fandom of the Crow Team series limited to the Talos Principle, which is a 3D puzzle game, and I hate all of the other games they make, which might be the case. Uh, it, it is certainly going to be, would be a journey through playing some B-tier first-person shooter games to play all the series slam games, and there's a lot of A-tier, triple-A tier, uh, first person shooter games that I haven't played yet so it would be kind of silly to to play that first hmm Thanks. That. Uh, moving on TechRaptor has an article Romero Games announces a new strategy IP under Paradox Interactive um uh, Let's see. Doesn't seem like it has a name or anything, no. Uh, I don't want to read this whole article. I'm trying to get better about not wasting time reading entire articles, searching things. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article. Google quote we're well Google colon we're quote committed to protecting and respecting privacy. Uh, end quote with Stadia uh, so talk about quote mining uh, this needs to be shown frankly Starlight. So, yeah. Google colon we're quote committed to protecting and respecting privacy end quote with Stadia. Talk about quote mining. Terrible journalism. If you're using that much punctuation, you're doing something wrong. Um, in the long run, there's nothing else to really learn from this. It's like, I, frankly, what is Stadia going to get Google that they don't already have? Uh, I think a lot of the fears of Google uh, Google st stealing people's privacy are fears that were justified a long time ago and have long since been uh, made mute because they've got the information that they want and I don't see too much information or telemetrics you can get if people were playing video games on Stadia uh, you would just get that they're playing a game and how long they're playing that game and that's it so and you can't really promote to them that they the game they're playing so you could say well because you played this strategy game maybe you'll like to play a different strategy game uh, and kind of cross promote other games on Stadia uh, but it's it, it's a reach to think that because you're playing an Assassin's Creed game they're going to know that you're into watching uh, action movies and thus they're going to promote the most recent action movie to you and advertise that to you or that you're into eating Raisin Bran because you 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 love to play Sudoku games on Stadia but so um, I don't think Stadia is about them getting 
better Google getting better search results. I think Stadia is almost certainly an attempt for Alphabet as a company and Google as a company to get away from search, get away from things that require looking at people's privacy. Uh, I vaguely recall that they stopped even scanning emails. Uh, the, they used to, because you had a Gmail, they, they used to um, look at all your emails, scan that, and, and, and use that for their AdSense service. I, I don't think they even do that anymore because it doesn't... It, they've got all the information they could get from it. Uh, on the other hand, the, if you want to be concerned about privacy, it, the, it's not video game companies that are terrible about that. Uh, except for video game companies that that lose passwords and lose your emails. That's the only thing that you really are concerned about. Let's see. The bad gamer 28 is on the chat. He says one at here. Hi, bad gamer. Um, this next game that came out on Steam came to me quite as a surprise. Um, I don't know why this came out with so little uh, announcement and in the way it did th there's also some weirdness um, because the this game the seventh guest 25th anniversary I recently covered the seventh guest and recorded it um, the original version and the graphics looked horrible and it's a really old game and now they're saying it has better graphics uh, and runs a little bit better but I mean I doubt that there's too much truth to that uh, the puzzles in the seventh guest are pretty difficult in, in some places and annoying uh, but there it's a big enough point-and-click adventure full-motion video game uh, to, to have gotten some form of announcement um, maybe the, the original game wasn't in widescreen or something uh, but they're selling it for eight dollars and forty-nine cents and fifteen cents, and it's mixed reviews. So I want to see what the negative reviews. Not really that impressed. Was hoping maybe it would have uh, the. It would be based on the much better CD version with the higher quality audio and video. Sadly, this is just in the mobile version from a few years ago. The, dumped on PC with few changes. The enhanced soundtrack is awful, so in graphical effects such as the mansion wipe when you clear a puzzle don't render correctly. So yeah, I I don't get why you would do that. The direct sequel to the seventh guest, the eleventh hour um, is on Steam and it is also mixed. These games are all so old. And I guess the seventh guest now is is no longer on sale. So this basically from what I'm getting something more I can do. Job's done. There you go. So here's the original version of the seventh guest, which you can just run through Scum VM. And it's widescreen in these cutscenes too. Or maybe it's not. Maybe maybe there are some black bars in it. Um, and maybe that was what's been enhanced here is that they've made it full screen but visually this looks no different also this is published by uh, Night Dive Studios which who are known for republishing and re-releasing the game and you can see at the request of the publisher 7th Guest is no longer available for sale on Steam check out the 25th edition 
here and then the 25th edition definitely looks a lot brighter and more like a mobile port of cell phone port of it it does get rid of the black bars uh, but yeah the graphics really don't look any better Let's see if we can see anything here it, it would be frankly impossible for the graphics to look better in this series this. This. apparently there's a deleted scene in the 25th version version um, but I'm not sure if this actually can run through the scum VM or emulator. And let's see if I can find the 13th doll. That's the one that's in development right now. So what this really tells me is that if you want the 11th hour, you should probably buy it right now before they get around to completely uh, blocking this with a 25th anniversary, or I guess it wouldn't be 25th anniversary. So you can see this is 11th hour from Night Dive, uh, and this very possibly will disappear pretty quickly. I might even have to buy this myself. It's $6.99 right now. Um, so if I don't own this, I probably should grab it. Uh, the 13th doll is the next next game that's in development but it doesn't even have a steam page yet so and that's more of a fan based game than anything else uh, so it's not from trilobite games or anything like that it's just somebody got approval to make a fan sequel to uh to the game and i would say it's kind of worth it if you're a fan of horror games and point and click adventure games just for the history of it to play the seventh uh guest in the 11th hour uh, but it really is more of a historical experience than a fun video game experience um, and that certainly is sucky to to see a better version get replaced just because the people who own the rights that they probably had nothing to do with actually developing the game uh, wanted to cut Trilo uh, wanted to cut the Night Dive Studios out of the picture and as the publisher and that, that also I guess explains why there was no advertisement on it either is because they didn't want to spend any money on it should have played that first. So I could have done that and then done that. Remember right now we're just trying to play Shaman cards. Next we have a game on Steam called House of Evil which suffers from dark screenshot syndrome. Like, Look at the screenshot. There's literally nothing here except for a, a line of white pixels. Uh, that's all I can see. Hmm. Unity. There is some points of this game that uh, do catch my eye in the trailer, though. The screenshots are horrible. Uh, so if we jump back to the beginning of the trailer, you have some panning landscape that's slightly interesting. Um, let's see. Wish this would play a little bit faster. Let's skip, skip, skip. A lot of panning shots. I'm losing confidence in the game. A phone. 
coming up and down. Hmm. Frankly, they have just so terribly uh, made this game that I'm I can't have any faith in it. It's in this other bundle, and they want eight dollars and fifty nine cents for it. Let's look at this developer and see if maybe this developer uh, has made better games before. This. And then this. Uh, no, this developer has not made anything else. In, in fact, they didn't even make a game called House of Evil 1, so... Yeah, House of Evil 2. Not worth... Worth putting on the fall list. Uh, next game we have on Steam. We may not have too many games, actually, today. Uh, Skyworld Kingdom Brawl, which seems like it's probably just some search engine optimization in that title um looks like it might be a strategy game in vr although it also seems like it's kind of like a card game in vr so it kind of feels like it's all over the place uh requires vr it's eight dollars and 49 cents discounted that's single player and multiplayer well yeah, this game doesn't look too interesting to me. It looks almost like it's a card-based, like, creep tower defense Dota game. Uh, or League of Legends game. One of those kinds of games. Let's see. Is there anything else I can do? Nah, uh, just play these cards. Just get all of these cards on the field before we win. Yeah, I don't see anything in Skyward Kingdom Brawl to interest me. Uh, I've been keeping my eye on this game from Gamatsu, this article on Gamatsu. Path of Minocene for is apparently coming out for the PS4 and Switch, and it launches April 16th. Uh, PS4 version due out in Europe a day later. This is a uh, kind of weirdly animated game where you're solving puzzles by manipulating the world and spinning things around. Here, let's see if we can show some of this. So yeah, you're walking around. And it has a kind of hand-drawn animation to it and it looked kind of interesting, but I'm not 100% certain that that there's much of a game there. See, we need to play three more shaming cards and then we'll be done with the daily quest. Uh, so, yeah, that's coming to more places. Uh, QuakeCon, the year of doom, uh, is happening in Dallas, Texas, July 25th to July 28th. Uh, so, if you're interested in that, uh, it looks like there's a lot of, a lot of people that go to it. Um, I particularly am, have no interest in playing Quake, so it would be a really hard justification in my mind for people to go to something like that if you're not into Quake. Um, I guess that's where something like PAX is a lot more appealing, is that if you're going to the Penny Arcade Expo, you really don't have to be even in the know as far as what Penny Arcade is, and you can just go and play board games, or you can just go and, and buy a bunch of garbage at the seller's alleys, and or you could just go and play video games. Uh, or meet up with people. There's there's enough variety there. Probably more variety than even what you get for something like uh, 
like E3. Like, yeah, there's probably more variety at PAX than E3 or Comic Con. Um, see, we already talked about Darkborn, but Kamatsu has an article about it also. Let's see. Uh, TechRaptor has an article here. Nightmare difficulty. Estimated 2019 first quarter video game jobs lost top, tops the entirety of 2018. That's what they, that should say. Entirety. Tops the entirety of 2018. Um, which, that's not surprising to me because that's kind of what I figured 2019 was going to be. Uh, there was a lot of hope for not a lot of good reason in 2018 with a lot of competition. Uh, so a lot of games came out in 2018. They flooded the market with video games. None of them were amazingly great. 2018 was a pretty bad year for, for games. Um, and as soon as the first quarter came in and every single company realized they weren't making as much money as they would like to on top of other economic factors not directly related to video games, uh, they had to make the decision to lay people off or they made the decision to lay people off. I don't know if they had to do it. Uh, it is interesting i suppose here but to look by the numbers activision blizzard has laid off i assume these are estimated 800 people ea 350 arena.net 143 ea fire monkey 50 razor 30 nitro games 30 or less outplay 30 or less next games 26 valve 13 techland 13 good old games 13 uh, and wish studios 13. Uh, if you eliminate, however, EA and Activision Blizzard, which have 1,150 of the layoffs, you're barely scraping by with like two, maybe 300 layoffs. Yeah, yeah, about 300, 250 layoffs. So it's Activision Blizzard being run into the ground and EA being run into the ground more than anything else uh, that's the problem um, so it's probably a slightly skewed perspective there to take from that um, meanwhile Hearthstone is in potentially some danger because Activision Blizzard runs Hearthstone and I don't think too many people would care if the EA games if like no new EA games came out if there was just no new FIFA no new Battlefield no new Battlefront uh, like so if EA went out of business I think people would dance on their graves more than than actually care uh, for for the fact that um, that that no more of the EA games are coming out, and Giant Bombs Bombcast did bring up an interesting point: is that maybe this is just for EA recreating the factors that is going to make EA pull one of their games out of their freezer and make a sequel to it. Like, what were the factors that caused somebody to cause EA to make Mirror's Edge Catalyst um, or Mirror's Edge in the first place? If EA starts suffering financially, they could pull from their history of a lot of games and make a new one and actually fund a new one and change their business model, which would be all that really needs to happen for EA is they just need to make some of make or remake some of the the games that they've already made in the past um, the, the only thing the for Activision Blizzard you could probably do the exact same thing well Blizzard doesn't have any old games 
too there's like one or two old blizzard games that could be remastered or re-released and we know they're working on it activision has a extremely long list of games that came out over the past few decades that they could make a remaster on and try to republish something if they were interested in doing that All right, so what I'm gonna do, since we've d gotten all the daily quests done, is the Tavern Brawl, because I forgot about that. <laughs> Oops, almost left for the European account. I should have done this first. Encounter the crossroads under a maelstrom, choose a class, get random cards. Each turn your cards get randomized. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with Hunter for that, and that should work perfectly fine. Tech Raptor has an article here, partake in survival fantasy adventure in Rind as it leaves early access. Um, show this game, Rind is leaving early access, that's pretty much all you need to know. It's uh, $9.99 until April 12th when it goes back to full price of $29.99. So let's, um, let's look at Rind on Steam. Here it is on Steam. It is mixed for its lifetime and mixed in total. It's $9.89. It doesn't look particularly interesting. It looks like it's an attempt at a survival game with a little bit more polish than most. Does look like it's a real game, but it must not play very well because doesn't seem like anybody likes it. Let's see what, if we can find it. This game is not full release. Dev team moved to a new project and just slapped out of early access label on the game. Stay away, have finished. Okay. Well, that's all you really need to know, isn't it? And I'm going to hold on to this. That one. So yeah, Tech Raptor probably being paid to market Rind, Rind, not, not a finished product according to at least one person who paid for and reviewed the game. Next, Gamatsu has an article, Bear With Me, the complete collection launches on July 9th for PS4, okay. Xbox One, Switch, and PC, and smartphones. So this Bear With Me series is a series I've had in my wish list and kept an eye on it's like a point and click weird uh game but it was episodic so i was never really willing to get the whole thing now that it's a complete collection i'm i'm willing to give it a chance and so we'll have to look up on this quickly um, there's there's a lot of games out there that are are like this so uh, turn to turn. Uh, it's important to figure out. I think Bear With Me, you play as a stuffed bear in this noir uh, murder mystery game is what it looks like. It's black and white for the most part. And all the graphics. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be a horror game which was one of the things I thought it might be because I'm, there's quite a few horror games that look like that too. I wonder what this does. Hmm. So yeah. Just it's a it's probably a pretty short, pretty simple point and click adventure game, but I've had my eye on it so so nice to see that it finally has a complete collection. For every game that does have a complete collection coming out for it, there's usually another <laughs> dozen that uh, uh, that doesn't. Just had to type in an age verification on Nintendo's website. Uh, Darksiders War Mastered Edition has come to the switch i don't know how war mastered edition really would play or look on the switch probably fine 
Uh, I don't recall there being any announcement of this though. So, it seems kind of weird that THQ Nordic would drop the ball and cause controversy and then kind of forget to announce that hey we've got a new version of this we should be putting all of our, all of our publishing and interest in that. Maybe that is an indicator that since they've they've since that incident uh, of them choosing to do an AMA on 8chan and being being insulted for choosing 8chan uh, maybe they have just kind of decided to go silent for all their announcements which is not what you can do really as a video game publishing company so perhaps they're in the middle of transitioning or adjusting how they publish and announce things but in the meantime this game came out and and it got no coverage whatsoever and I cannot really believe that that is because there is now this secret blacklist where all the mainstream video game journalists are simply refusing to to publish any press releases from THQ Nordic uh, on the other hand, there was way too much news about THQ Nordic that happened throughout all of 2018. They were acquiring so many companies that uh, that perhaps the, it is better that they they Options. limit themselves Options. in coverage. Uh, Gamatsu has an article here. The PC Gaming Show 2019 is set for June 10th. The an annual PC show at E3 has been dated, which is just really a confirmation that uh, we have about three of the the normal shows for E3 have come out and said yes, we're still doing our normal shows, where we have three or four people who are specifically saying no, we're not doing a stage show. Um, and instead we are uh, either doing a direct message show, show or nothing at all. Job's done. Uh, so E3 will still have events. I don't know if I'm really going to spend the effort though to watch E3 and live stream it. It, it really is just with my insomnia and, and just t inability to wake up at the right time. It's just gonna boil down to to whether I'm awake and, and feel like doing it or not. Um, let's see. Play this. Looks like this guy's not really playing, so I'm going to get this tavern brawl done. Nice and easy. Which, that's fine. That just means we can move over to the European account. Aw, oh, seriously? Available mid-April. So, we are at the early April. Somewhere around April 13th or something. I guess is when I can open this package. I'm just gonna have to sit on it until then. That sucks. Alright, well... Well, I could stay on the main account and try to move the streak up and get to a higher rank. Uh, let's get the daily quest on the European account and the Asian account done first. If we have more news, then I'll jump back to the America's account. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article here. Drive through the dystopian USA in dark future blood red states beta. Um, this is another hype article of a game in beta. I don't Welcome know really what you would get from driving through a dystopian USA from what you, this looks like. It looks like you're just driving a car that it shoots things. Uh, let's re-roll this. And three games with Rogue Warrior. I need one victory with Rogue Warrior. That should be pretty easy. And then Rumble Run bosses might be pretty easy too so I'm gonna come over here take rogue and just start playing uh, 
Uh, Gamatsu has an article, A Dark Room for Switch launches April 12th. It's been revamped for consoles. Uh, let's see. It will launch on the Nintendo eShop. I've never heard of this. A Dark Room is an innovative text-based adventure that harkens back to the magic of Zork. Alright, well then I am not interested in it. Uh, frankly. I, I already don't like it when games have a ton of text in them and I have to read a lot. Uh, like, because then I have to read and vocalize and read it out, out loud. Uh, or at least I feel the need that I have to do that, so... If something is 100% text-based, or even heavily text-based, that's not an experience that's going to be good for my voice. Moving on, we have a game on Steam called ESKO or ESKO. This looks like a VR game where you're manipulating um, some collection of old-school computer teletype devices. Uh, English language is not supported. It's free. And apparently doesn't require uh, hmm. Well, what language does it support though? French. I kind of would like to play this game. It doesn't support or you, well, it does support VR but doesn't require it. Hmm. Apparently this was funded by a French organization. I'd like to play this, but I don't think my French is good enough to uh, to possibly think for a second I could uh, I could program a computer with that. Although maybe programming in French is not as hard as it sounds because if it's just the same words in programming it may be it may not hmm. never thought about that what would Uther do um, let's see gameindustry.biz has an article lucid site secures six million investment oh, company who will also launch a developer tool set to bridge the gap between blockchain and traditional game what platformers this is another one of those blockchain companies uh, that you shouldn't spend any investment money in uh, that's gonna happen hard there, this blockchain bubble we're living in this fake concept of, of real money is gonna crash down to uh, to real eventually Okay. Let's see. Hmm. If I do this and then this and then this. Interesting. Just end the turn here. Uh, Gamatsu has an article over here. Where, where is my mouse cursor? Uh, concrete Genie details PlayStation VR modes. Uh, I have no idea what Concrete Genie is. Uh, I think this is the game where you're you're a 2D flat character on the graffiti on the walls of a world. Maybe? I don't know, that doesn't really look like wh that's what this is. So many options. Hmm. Apparently it's... Something. Well, I'm kind of interested in Concrete Genie, Genie but I think it's a PlayStation exclusive, so... So many options. Shuffle that. And then this. And then this. And then this. Hello. Hello. 
now. Uh, game industry that biz has an article. Record year for UK games market is spending near six billion pounds. Software alone accounted for four billion in revenue for the first time. Records broken in hardware and digital spending. So, yeah. Slightly good news, I think, before what is likely to not be good news. Here we go. So now while this guy is on the field, there's no real reason to play this guy. And I believe I have a victory here anyways. Uh, Game of Sutra has an article, Get a Job, Crystal Dynamics is looking for a senior tools engineer. That's in Redwood City, California. Alright, so that gets that part done. And we have 15 more cards that we need to play. There are two or less. So we just need to come here in the solo rumble run and just play this. Um, after characters here destroyed a random enemy, what am I doing here? Do you, damage, damage, damage. Like, heal, heal. Not a lot of heal. So, this minion only takes one damage at a time. I'm gonna take that one. And then... What is my shrine doing? It's damaging myself. So I'll just take this. So if I get all these done, I'll actually win, but these would be hard victories to get, certainly. I'll probably just lose and start over at the beginning. This this shrine is, as long as it's here, we do damage to ourselves. For every damage we do to ourselves, uh, we do five damage to the opponent. So I have to just hurt myself ten times to do fifty damage. Hmm. So you start with this, which does 5 damage to me, which then does 5 damage to him, plus hey, 2. Two shrine is whenever you discard a card, summon a random demon, so he's just going to try and discard cards. Next we have a game on Steam called Hexapath, which doesn't look particularly interesting. It looks like it's a simplistic concept and a one screen unity puzzle game. Yeah, I don't see anything interesting in it. A dollar nineteen cents discounted and a bunch of bundles. Uh yep. Reporting for duty. Uh, you got nothing. If I play this next turn, it'll heal me and that's about it. You are not the boss of me! Let's see... I just need a volunteer! Hmm. So this is a pretty bad setup we've got. Yeah. The first wish is free. The battle! Hmm... Gonna try and kill this. Next, we have a game on Steam called Snooze 2021. This looks like it is a low effort for asset flip game. I guess the reason why that so many of these are horror games is because you can hide a lot in darkness. English is not supported. It's called Black Flash Flashlight. Before they changed the name. Uh, it says it has English full audio, but it doesn't have an interface with subtitles of English, so English language is not supported. Uh, this is the definition of a low effort posting at 79 cents discounted. They, they didn't even uh, 
figure out the important bits. Um, As you desire. I, I could kill this and it would let me play this. Or I can wait until this responds. Which it probably should. Anyways, Snooze 221 not making it to the fuck wishes. Next we have a game on Steam called Brood that looks a lot like that game Shelter, which is interesting because Shelter 3 uh, has been kind of announced and you're going to be able to play as an elephant this time. I'm not sure if the Shelter series really is a good series of games or if it's just that it looks unique enough. This is early access, $4.99. Um, the thing about something like this is I just don't know. I guess I don't know about Shelter and I don't know about this game. So I'll put it on the fall list and I'll hope somebody reviews it to tell me what to believe and what to know there. What damage to all other minions. Just play this. Yeah, it's playtime. Reporting for duty. Yeah. I feel like Brood is probably just a clone of Shelter. And I I almost certainly would play Shelter first. I think I even own Shelter. In fact, I'm starting to get rather surprised by the games I do own that I haven't gotten around to playing. Shavala, protect me. Okay. One damage to all other minions. Randomly five damage. So what I would want to do is uh, kill this. Deal, take damage. Do this. And I don't think even if I were to get five damage out here, if this just does one, two, three, four, five hits on me. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article, GameStop posts $673 million full year loss. The specialty real killer acknowledges, quote, the challenges facing our pre-owned video game business and a need to change its business model. Um, the question is, are we really going to have no more use video games I, I think you're going to see a big reaction over a longer period of time than most people expect if you can if you can't buy used games and they are way expensive like they are right now um Taunt can only take one damage at a time. I think I kind of have to play this. Come at me. Right. I came here to win. Yeah, yeah. I could see how GameStop would go out of business, and, but then oh, almost here. certainly I would think Walmart and other regular storefronts would choose to um, to start selling used games um, or you might even see the resurgence of people going to pawn shops or the like killed my own guy for no reason 
That was dumb. That was really dumb. Well, I think uh, I'm still kind nothing. of fine, though. So let's just end the turn here and, and think we'll still win. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article. The UK uh, video game spending rose to $7.43 billion in 2018. So, yeah, the UK video game spending is going up for the moment. Uh, maybe eventually Brexit fears would would cause that to start going down, but that that's questionable at best. Flash this Try this and then this Try this and then I just need to hit this and I'll win. That took more time than I thought it would. Uh, let's see. TechCrafter has an article here. Train Tycoon puzzle game. Train Valley 2 exits early access this April. So, I think Train Tycoon 2 is on my follow list. So, once it leaves early access, I'll start looking at it. Um, I guess maybe April might be the right time to, to do some cleanup on the follow list. Yeah, I'm thinking April 1st, and I don't know how I'm going to find extra time this year to do that, but I probably do need to do it. So, next victory, hopefully. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article. I kind of want to read these. I've, I've been skipping most of these articles just reading the titles. Uh, Humble Bundle co-founder stepped down because, quote, we're more startup kind of guys. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, this and this. Let's see. This week, game... Uh, from an article in Game Industry, I guess that's Game Industry, not Biz. Uh, Graham, who was one of John Graham, who stepped down, uh, the CEO, was interviewed. He said, "Quote: After doing this for a while, I'm in a place where I think it's time for me to take a break." End quote. Uh, Rosen, the other person who stayed down, added that the pair to Attend to s intend to stick around the company for a while as advisors, if nothing else. But it claimed, "quote We're more startup kind of guys, and Humble Bundles has become huge for our benefit and for Humble Bundles' benefit. I think Alan is going to do a really good job." So yeah, everybody's saying something positive here. So it probably isn't has a nasty breakup. Uh, with the two main people of Humble Bundle stepping down and Alan Patmore uh, stepping up. It could be anything though. Like, who knows what the truth is? Let's see. What does this one do? Whenever you gain armor, refresh your mana crystals. Let's start working on that. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> now what does they hit here as many times as possible? Because one damage equals five damage. So that could have been fifteen damage if all three had hit. I I'm so far still hopefully uh Cautiously optimistic with the Humble Bundle. I, I hope it doesn't change terribly and somehow become worse deals or something that's uh, not of any real interest to me. Uh, on the other hand, it is also getting to the point where... Um, where a lot of the humble bundle deals can't 
can't really be that successful anyways because for me because I have so many games that the bundles usually offer at least one game I already own but in a weird way that also means that I'm getting a backup listing of a lot of games so if Steam somehow did go out of business and I lost access to all my Steam account there is also this possibility uh, hopefully that would never happen and the likelihood is low uh, but yes, yes. Defeat an enemy slime to disable their power. Now, finish this. Yeah. Crystallize. Um, so. So yeah, I guess my humble bundle account and my Twitch account, Twitch Prime account, would have quite a lot of games. The shrines will always come back. So After you just science the enemy shrine returns. Next we have a game on Steam called Pathogen, which looks like it will be a slightly interesting idea as like a medical game, but it really is just a kind of skin over a very generic uh, asteroids clone. And it's not very good. It's early access, $4.19. It says English and simplified Chinese. Uh, looks like a cheap Chinese like asteroids gone that's all it looks like uh, the idea of inner space the video game if you know the movie inner space which nobody really should uh, or shrinking down and looking inside a human body is slightly interesting but uh, reporting for duty it's not something that crystallize. Let's keep this the guy battle. off base. Um, Plague Inc. I guess is still the closest kind of disease-based simulator out there. Uh, there is something else you can do. You could do a lot of things. You could you could make an action adventure game where you're shrunk down in a human body, and that would be an interesting story uh, that hasn't been told before. Right. I don't know. If this taunt actually does anything for me. First I'm not using this because I want to be able to hit something with with an attack and do damage to myself because that's more efficient. Uh, moving on, Gamma Sutra has the same article. Basically, GameStop's fortunes fall amid declining sales of games and consoles. Uh, frankly, yeah, I've probably said it many times before, but GameStop's problem is is there's just no diversity in their star stores at all. Uh, even, um, this jungle e even gadget stores before they failed uh, had some variety. Even Radio Shack before it failed had some variety. There, there's just like no variety at, at GameStop. It's video games and only video games. Uh, you're not going to walk in it unless you want to buy video games. You're not going to be allowed by your parents to walk in it if they don't want to buy you video games or don't want you looking at video games. Uh, they're little somewhat uh, collectibles, somewhat associated with video games. Uh, doesn't really change the scenario much. Hmm. And Kill some people. The battle. Might as well. As you desire. I want this dead too. Okay. This. What we do. Job done. In the turn. Because he, he has like seven mana, so he can just refresh his mana every time he gains armor. And 
use it all again. Which means he could summon quite a lot. Fine shield. Doubled healing. Okay. Come out to me. So what do I want to do? Kill this. Hit this and hit this. Animal, you don't got the discipline. The battle and hit that. Divine shield, life, steel, healing is doubled. I'm just gonna hold on to the rest of these cards, I guess. Uh, okay, moving on. This is probably a pretty big story that won't get reported on. We have an article here on GameIndustry.biz. The latest batch of Chinese game approvals included 30 foreign titles. Nearly a thousand games have been approved since the freeze was lifted in December. Um, so, let's see. Of the titles, four, 959 are domestic. And of those nine are 914 are mobile, so the uh, only 40 games were PC games have been approved, and five are console games. Um, most recent list includes 30 foreign titles, the first time any games outside of China have been approved for publicization. The set approval in this round included 22 mobile games, five PC games, and three console games. Nine of these were the more Japanese titles, and six were from the U.S. Interesting. Um, let's see. Heal. And hey, you got kill that nothing. guy. And the light do that. Do that and do that. I can't play this card. I don't have any spells. As you desire. Hmm. Ha! I can take it. Crystallize. Hmm. All that training is paid. Let's see. Uh, I have returned. This, the article goes on. For comparison, 55 foreign titles were licensed in quarter one in 2018 before the freeze had taken effect, out of a total of 1,931. So, before the freeze effect in one quarter, 55 foreign titles were approved. Now, several months later of the freeze, nearly a year later, uh, 30 foreign titles have been approved, uh, and these. All the games have been awaiting for approval for several months now and have a back have been backlogged since that point. Right. I guess I'm just gonna have to win this the old fashioned way. I can take it. Job's done. That'll work. Uh, one interesting shift that Nico Par Partners notes is that quarter one of 2018, nearly half of all game licenses approved were for Mahjong and poker titles. So far in quarter one of 2019, no titles under this umbrella have ever been approved, which may be one of the reasons the total number of approvals is so lower, so much lower in this quarter compared to the same quarter last year. Interesting idea. I guess China's had it with the gambling games, and frankly, it's n not, in my opinion, the place of government to decide whether a market is saturated with with certain types of games. But the Chinese government certainly does not agree with me on that one point. Um, but yeah. 
I guess maybe if I was paying really close attention, there probably have been fewer uh, Mahjong and uh, poker titles coming out on Steam for a similar reason. Right. Do I want to play this now? Reporting for duty. Oh no. Let's see, is there anything more in this article? Nope. But that that is good news. It, it is good news because certainly the Chinese government and their censorship could have just said we're never approving any foreign games at all. And the big ticket foreign games are the ones that we would like to see come to China so China has a concept of what good games are instead of all these really terrible games that they're often forced to say to defeat. I'm just gonna play Paladin a second time because it's it's probably one of the easiest ones to win with. Um, but but yeah. A bunch of ja Japanese and Korean games being approved in China is a good thing. And, a, and the few United States based games that are big being approved in China is a good thing in the long run. Just gonna trade all of these. Uh, next we have a game on Steam called Stab 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 which seems to be an 8 player versus player style game. It doesn't look very interesting. It's like a spider with a knife or a spike and that's it. $6.79 discounted. It does say it has single player experience, uh, uh, experience but yeah. Nope. This in no way looks like a quality game to me. Let's see. Next we have a game on Steam called Treasure Masters Incorporated The Lost City. This is obviously a hidden object game and it doesn't look like it's a very good or recent one because it has black bars. It's $5.59. Uh, yeah, not interested in those kind of games right now. So all I need to do is hurt myself a second time and I'll win this battle. Uh, Techraptor has an article here, Valve index details leaked, controllers likely not included. Uh, the Valve index probably is an improvement. Uh, ob obviously, like it should be a improvement uh, over what are available now as VR systems uh, just barely supports a 970 so I would need a better graphics card personally to run this thing uh, but I was planning on getting a better graphics card anyways not for VR though so. uh, you got nothing. okay Give me two attack. Play this. Attack. Um, yeah, I'm not super hyped about the Valve Index though because it doesn't really matter. It, it's kind of the chicken and egg scenario. It's like until there are good games, it doesn't matter to me if there's a better. Uh, a better piece of equipment out there maybe there won't be a better piece of equipment out there until they're good games so yeah the the valve index looks like it's better hardware however we're still still haven't seen a lot of VR games to, to claim that there actually is a industry there it, it still feels like it is something for a, people who are rich who can afford VR who want to play VR for about an hour a month and that's it and that's just not realistic 
Uh, I find it. Uh, I've found it impossible to even buy the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One because I'm a PC gamer, and for those exclusives, which there haven't been that many, um, that's just not something that that was justifiable at their high price tags. What does this one do? Spells cost health instead of mana. Interesting. So which one do I want to do? This one, I guess. Uh, Gamatsu has an article here. The Nintendo Switch Online adds Super Mario Brothers, the Lost Levels, and Punch Out f featuring Mr. Dream and Star, Star Soldier in on April 10th. Um, I love Punch Out. The Lost Levels are the original release version of Super Mario Brothers 2, the original Mario Bros. 2, not the one that was seen in the United States. Uh, Star Soldier I've never heard of, so I wouldn't be surprised if Star Soldier... Oh, well, this is the English trailer, and it is giving you a game called Star Soldier. Never heard of it. Meanwhile, you're getting the same games, but they look different in the Japanese version. Hmm, okay. Let's see. I can play this. Or I can do this. Crystallize. If I could get all three of this to hit this, I would win. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> nope, done. nope, that didn't work. That's alright. I can find other ways to do this. I'll just play this next turn and then attack something. Um, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, Punch-Out, and Star Soldiers is a particularly bad offering, I would say. It's not very varied. It's, uh, I can just play this. I can just play this and then play this again. Um, it's not a very interesting varied offering. There, there's no big ticket game there. Punch Out is kind of big ticket, but if you don't want to play Punch Out, then you're left, uh, left, left with an incredibly difficult Mario game and Star Soldiers, which is a game I've never even heard of. So I think there could have been a better third offering. And quite frankly, the eShop slowly drizzling out these virtual console games that they've already offered I, before many times I think is ridiculous it, it should have been day one we've got all of these games ready to go uh, or at least we've got all the big games ready to go and then then maybe work towards Super NES releases Next, we need to play 15 minions that cost 20 or less, which is almost certainly a Murloc deck. Um, let's see. Warrior has a decent amount of twos. Is Uh, this has a decent amount of tunes. The Shaman's a Murloc deck though, so let's just play that. Play Custom Shaman at rank 22. Might as well play ranked. And move forward. Uh, next we have a game on Steam called Total Esports Action Manager, which looks like it's Probably nothing that interests me. It's a simulation game of being an esports manager. I don't know why so many people want to be an esports manager, or why there would be so many people that want to be an esports manager. Because uh, you you would have to probably be an esports player first before you could be a manager. In the same way that uh, a lot of 
well, maybe not so many professional football coaches actually played football professionally. Mm. I guess I guess the general concept here is that it is ob obfuscated. It's not obvious that what a esports manager does. So everybody probably thinks they can do it, where it is pretty obvious that most people realize they can't actually succeed as an esports player because they're just not that good at games. Um, so they want to, people probably would want to be in the action while not actually um, admitting to themselves that they, they're not qualified. Uh, moving on, we have a game on Steam here what called To Catch a Monkey, which looks like a single screen Unity game that is a mobile phone port, if I were to guess. Looks uninteresting. It's early access and $4.99 with no discount. That's easily dismissed. I'm trying to kind of burn through all the news here, but I don't know if we're really going to do this. We're just going for like one long episode today when I should have broken it up. Alright. Yeah, let's just do that. And then end the turn. Now, I don't usually talk about Kickstarters, but I will point out that the Firmament Kickstarter is out by Cyan Worlds. They had a Kickstarter for their game Abduction. Abduction came out. It was an alright idea and concept from the creators of Myst while not being really super long or super big. I, I think I think it was a fine game, but um, but could have used more variety in its its gameplay mechanics and so firmament looks like it has a chance to be different from that and be a bigger project that being said uh, this is also very possibly a case where where it might be slightly deceptive in the in how big the game is or how big the game will be uh, they want about 1.3 million dollars and it just started i think today it has 22 days left to go and it has 6573 backers and it has half a million dollars already uh, cyan is about the only company that has a proven track record of delivering games and them not turning out to be delivered as a completely unfinished piece of garbage uh, I don't know if there's anything that you're really going to get as far as supporting the Kickstarter as far as rewards. Um, let's see. This is a strategy guide and game manual. And then there's some exclusive digital content if you back it a little bit more hmm. yeah there's a lot of digital things but I, I don't know if they're gonna actually give you any physical things uh, well, if you back it at the $120 mark, you get a vintage 90s box with games and goodies. Hmm. So, so there are some collectibles, but uh, there, there's a level up here as high as $5,000. Yeah, the highest tier is $5,000. Um, where you can be in the game, have your likeness in the game, which is okay. That's something people are interested in. Uh, it doesn't, frankly, look to me like it, it, you're getting much if you wouldn't back it, so. And I, I certainly can't afford to back it at 
uh, just to get the game. Uh, the game will almost certainly get made uh, anyways, and uh, you know, yeah, you're, you're not really missing out on anything. But that is about the one Kickstarter per year I might announce if I was going to mention any. Meanwhile, thousands upon thousands of other Kickstarters and and funding things fail to deliver. Speaking of failing to deliver, TechRaptor has an article, the an Apex Legends bug is resetting players' accounts. Uh, the recommendation right now is to not craft or basically do anything uh, as they're trying to work on it, is what I saw. People, I assume, are still playing Apex Legends. It's still popular. Uh, that being said, I, I kind of feel like Apex Legends will disappear before some, something like Fortnite disappears. Where Fortnite has, uh, has this stick to itiveness because it's free that a lot of other games won't have. So, uh, let's see. We had already talked about this, but Borderlands 3 will be a six month Epic Game Store exclusive. This is April 3rd from Gamma Sutra, so it's to be believed. Uh, I was talking about the religious iconology and the religious theme of Borderlands 3. This certainly looks like. Hey, that is what they're going for. Now, I don't know if if this is something that will be a big part of the story for the first five hours and then get forgotten throughout the game, or if it will be the solid theme throughout the game. Uh, I don't think Borderlands can actually succeed if it is if it is so singularly focused. Uh, it should probably not do that so remember on this we're just trying to play two mana minions and so I'm gonna do this and this and then end the turn because this is probably explosive trap yeah, I'm personally perfectly fine with waiting six months to play Borderlands 3. I'll probably wait a lot longer than that. I'll probably wait until there's like a Game of the Year version, frankly. Uh, Tech Raptor has the same article. So, this character is clearly a siren, which means there's no less than four of, I believe, six the in the entirety of the universe of the sirens in Borderlands 3, so the Sirens concept is probably going to get changed. I wouldn't mind if, if what happened is they just found out a bunch of Sirens have been born. Now I don't know if this guy in the background is supposed to be a Siren also. Uh, they kind of look like they're brother and sister or maybe romantically involved team and these are the bad guys. And then there's new four new classes and one of these is supposed to be the Beastmaster class like maybe this one um, so the classes aren't gonna be the same and it's coming out September 13th then we actually don't have a ton of, of <laughs> extra bits of information we just have little announcements here and there of oh uh, here's the release date uh, Time. Get this for the explosive trap. This. This. In the turn. So I'm gonna just see if this announcement trailer has anything new for me to see. This is like one of those trailers that. 
moves so fast that you probably would need to watch it frame by frame to evaluate all the elements. I wonder, and this, this would be easy to pull off and sneak this in there, uh, the Borderlands series has had this the, the midget class of characters uh, and midget is maybe offensive and that was kind of the joke in the first place. I'm seeing a like more small child class of characters uh, and Children of the Vault would certainly line, align with that and make sense. So I wonder if if the, w they will introduce a child class and get rid of the midget class just quietly without anybody really realizing it. Um, inherently, that is, uh, they say this is going to feel a lot like Borderlands 1, but in 2019's politically correct environment, a lot of the politically incorrect jokes that were said in Borderlands 1 probably aren't coming over and so we just are kind of i'm personally just kind of hoping borderlands 3 isn't this super wokish game that that loses all of its comedy and hopefully it doesn't uh, but i also even even in the best case scenario suspect some things are going to get uh, left on the cutting room floor and, and censored out um, and frankly, I don't think it's the same writer. That I don't think the writer for Borderlands One uh, works at Gearbox anymore. So the game is going to probably change in the, its feel, at least a little bit. Um, moving over, we have a game called Pig Osifal, which looks like a twin-stick shooter. Kind of bullet hell game for kids where you're running around food uh, it looks very simplistic in the interface though and it's a dollar and 79 cents discounted so yeah I don't see anything interesting here yeah do I have enough here to win because I am trying to win I'm one short. Hmm. Next we have on Steam an easy, easy purchase for me because I get it for free. It's Borderlands Game of the Year uh, enhanced. So I feel like Game of the Year edition already existed for Borderlands on Steam. Uh, so what's new? Uh, improved character models, environments, new weapons, uh, new character heads, uh, and new gold chests and keys. So they put shift keys in there uh, into the original game, which didn't exist. Which means I will have to have all the Borderland games installed on my secondary hard drive at all times uh, to install these shift keys. This gives me like a really good reason to go back and play that second playthrough of Borderlands 1 at some point, but I don't know if that's like 15 years from now, frankly. Uh, it very well may be 15 years from now, like at, at the rate that I am moving. Okay, and that's all the European accounts. So I will come back on Friday and confirm whether I have the Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced Edition or whether there's something I have to do to install it and whether I can install the original version or not. Uh, there, there is some uh, there is some weirdness too there. If I wanted to play the original version, usually when you get these enhanced versions, they, they make it very difficult if not impossible to run the original versions, uh, which sucks. All right, Paladin and Druid. I guess I only really need to get two two of these done, so let's see if we can just play Druid. Next, we have a game on Steam called I'm on Observation Duty. 
it's a Five Nights at Freddy's clone, and in no real way looks like it's even as good as Five Nights at Freddy's for a dollar sixty-nine since discounted. With holy fire. I must protect the wild. Uh, we need to exchange all of these cards. Raptor has an article: the humbly monthly. Humble monthly subscribers surpasses 400,000 subscriptions. Um, I don't do Humble Monthly, uh, but if I had less games, I probably would. Uh, the, the problem with Humble Monthly is too often those games are too... Uh, are games I already own. For the price, it's not worth it. Uh, TechRaptor has another article, Solve Global Starvation in Turn-Based Sim Universe, Universal Space Station Incorporated, which doesn't look very interesting to me. Let's see what this trailer is. Um, that. And then the turn. Yeah, this game looks kind of cool, but it looks like there really isn't much to it, and the trailer really is not showing anything about this game. Uh, this is a hype article, certainly. Feels like TechRaptor is getting worse about that stuff, too. I'm playing terribly. Let's see. Three plus that. Play this, play this. For the wild. Play this. Why is this? Oh, it's only minions. Time waits for no they one. have a chance. Interesting. Probably should have left that guy alive so I could do this. Not on my watch. Is this the fishing tournament? Play this and play this up to level nine. That is incredible. Seriously? Let's see. Moving on, Gamatsu has an article, Darkly Humorous CRPG Paranoia Happiness is Mandatory has been announced for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. I haven't heard of this game. Um, it's Big Ben Interactive and Black Shamrock and Cyanide Studios. I think I've heard of Cyanide Studios. There's a Steam page already. And a trailer, so let me look at this trailer and... Make sure it's if it shows you. me anything. CRPG to me means Chinese RPG. I'm not sure if that's really what it means, though. I've still yet to lock that into my head as far as hmm. what that's supposed to mean. Alright. Where charge. The charge. Two, two. Hmm. 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 Gain six armor. Gain the armor. In the turn. Uh, 
Well, I just watched the trailer and I still don't have a clue what what this what this game is. So here it is on Steam. It looks like it might be a top-down stealth game. It says it's an RPG game. But yeah, I have no clue. And it's not out yet, so we'll probably get more information about it. Almost certainly. Gamatsu has an article here, Project Sakura Wars for Mitsu developer interview tidbits, if you're interested in that. Um, this is just bits of information for this new Project Sakura Wars game. Let's see. Deal 6 damage to a dragon. I don't think there are any dragons. On the field. First. For the wild. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article here. GameStop, Sony pulling game cards won't have a material impact on sales. Says the executive chairman, Daniel Damadio, uh, believes PS4 owners will still fund digital purchases by buying the currency and stuff. Now, the reason. It seems like Sony pulled the game cards is because the refund system was implemented and I guess their fear was that there would have been some way in which you could have bought the game at GameStop and then gotten it refunded and then pulled some kind of shenanigans that way. I, I don't know how that really would have worked, but it seems like that was their, their fear. Uh, meanwhile, you can still buy PSN currency at GameStop. You just can't buy specific cards, digital codes for specific games, which that probably will hurt the sales. Um, yeah, frankly, it probably will hurt the sales. Um, And Gamma Sutra has the same article. GameStop's fortunes fall amid declining sales of games and consoles. Maybe the argument here is it won't have any material effect because, uh, because all GameStop is already at the bottom, and it can't fall any further Hello, down. Friend. Can attack the only effect. I for no one. Might as well just play it. Tech Raptor has this article. Play as an elephant in the survival adventure game Shelter 3 coming in 2020. So this is a very early hype article. But yeah, you'll be playing as an elephant. So Shelter 1 you played as a small animal. Shelter 2 you played as a medium animal. And now you're playing as a um, very large animal. Up. Hmm. I'm skipping over a bunch of games. I think I'm just going to leave them for Friday. Hmm. So, I'm just going to skip over a bunch of these and try and cover the news. from a beast and double its health. Interesting. That'll be interesting. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article here. Flare Games founder launches Phoenix Game Group ahead of multiple acquisitions. Serials game investor Klaus Kirsting wants to create a formidable group of international game developers and relevant service providers. 
Um, the new initiative will focus on free-to-play games and is designed to solve issues for s that small to mid-sized studios often struggle to get capital individually. So yeah, a new mega conglomerate is attempting to be formed. Uh, The chance that I'll ever have a new tree ants is kind of extremely low. Uh, uh, Gamma Sutra has the similar article. Flare Games founder launches the Phoenix Games to give small devs a leg up. Uh, same basic story. So we may hear more from a company called Phoenix Games in the future. There we go. So uh, that was one druid game. And now all we need to do is win two more druid games. And we'll leave this one alone. So, custom druid ranked play. Gameindustry.biz has an article here. Guerrilla Games, Herman Holst, and Yu Suzuki close close out reboot development develop lineup. Uh, reboot develop lineup. Okay, so this is a uh, German. Uh, conference in Dubrovnik, I assume that's in Germany, uh, that has 138 speakers lined up for next week. Kind of like a CDC for Europe. Uh, that being said, I doubt too much will be announced at, at it. And if anything is announced, it'll probably be very German focused games so you're the a lot of farming simulator games and things like that biking simulator games uh, i doubt any anything that the united states would consider a triple a uh my greetings triple a quality game will get announced here uh that being said a lot of these conferences don't have too much to do with announcements of new games or anything that would actually be of much interest to the consumer other than it's just a bunch of game developers uh, talking to each other and what they talk about might be an indication of how they feel and what kind of art they're going to create in the future um, let's see gameindustry.biz will be hosting live streams from a selection of reboot develops talks uh, it'll be taking place between April 11th and April 13th. Um, Time waits for no one. Amy Henning, Warren Spector, Warren Spector, and the heads of Microsoft's 343 Industries will all be uh, um, at the event speaking. What does that really mean? Not a lot, frankly. He has Gamatsu, I mean Gamma Sutra's, no Gamatsu's article on Borderlands 3. The four characters you'll be playing as is Maze the Gunner, Amara the Siren, FL4K the Beastmaster, and Zane the Operative. So, this is a Siren class, uh, I assume Gunner might be more of a... Uh, standard soldier class, Beastmaster is kind of like the sniper class, and the Zane the Operative is probably like the Stealth Assassin class. And I imagine it'll be slightly different from all the other classes that have been in all the other games. Uh, but probably not amazingly different. Not sure who I'd want to play with. Uh, Probably not Zane the Operative, maybe as Amara, 
Probably not the gunner. Maybe the beastmaster. Um. Hmm. See if there's anything else that's being mentioned here of any importance. There's all kinds of different versions you can buy. There's a $250 diamond loot chest collector's edition of Borderlands 3. You would so be a sucker to buy options. it, but it's out there. There's also a deluxe edition that's $80, um, which give you XP and loot drop boost mods, which sucks. Yeah, there is definitely a consideration here um, about... How much microtransaction like elements are going to be in Borderlands 3 because Borderlands 2 was going that route and they at the last second chose not to really make anything cost money but those gold keys could have cost money. Could have been microtransactions the whole time. Uh, this guy is just not going to play apparently. Well, we, can, we can work with that. Hmm. Um, it seems to me that even if you buy the deluxe edition for $80, you're not getting a season pass. Uh, you have to pay the $100 uh, version, which is the super deluxe edition, to get the season pass, which bumps the game up quite a lot. And that's what season passes have always been, is, is just a sneaky way of increasing the price of games. So, yeah, you probably should just buy the Super Deluxe Edition if you're going to. Or, you know, better yet, if you're going to play it on PC, just wait six months and until it's off of Epic and then see what the price is. Uh, you asked for it. I must protect the wild. I don't want to see Borderlands 3 fail, though. Uh, I think it's important to say that out loud. I, I really don't want it to be a failure. I want it to be a good game. So I hope it succeeds despite itself, despite the potential potholes it might run into. Uh, we already talked about this job listing. Game of has a listing for a senior combat designer in Cockeysville, Maryland. We had already talked about that. And then that lets me jump through a lot of this. The light yep. protects me. Gamatsu has an article here. Everybody's Golf VR, Everybody's Swing trailer. So Everybody's Golf, which is a long-running golf game in Japan that I don't think always comes over to... The West um, is apparently doing a PlayStation Move VR element uh, to it. So this one is coming to PlayStation VR May 21st in the Americas, Europe, and June what? 7th in Japan. Uh, I would like to see more consistent releases of the every, Everybody's Golf series uh, worldwide, although this VR version is not really one of the major releases that interests me. I hope you like my invention. And then Gamatsu has this article, Rune Factory 4 Special Japanese Limited Edition has been detailed. Uh, haven't heard anything about Rune Factory. So I did want to point out this box though. Like this is a, I believe that's Marvelous's logo. A special edition, I think, uh, hmm. special edition box that includes the discs and an art book and the game, and some soundtracks. And it's a cute little picture of these characters. Um, I guess Rune Factory 4 specials due out for the Switch in, in 2019 at some point for North America and Europe. And that's about all the information I have. <laughs> um, okay. 
gain an empty mana crystal and Time then. waits for no one. Four two with the rush. Talk. The scourge will devour all. I'm not sure if Rune Factory is an interesting game though. <laughs> the one thing this article doesn't really talk about is hey, is this a game worth playing or how does this game play at all? It looks like it's a JRPG, but then the name Rune Factory makes me think that it's actually something completely different. What to do? What to do? Now I'm gonna have to go back and try to figure out what games I've looked at and what games I haven't because I still have about 15 to 20 games that came out on Steam. We did not have a dearth of them. But I think I might just leave that for Friday. Uh, there, there is a small possibility that Thursday will have a special stream for the expansion if it came out on Hearthstone and started to come out. I doubt it actually would come out. Uh, but if we could look at the cards and make a special stream around, then that would be cool. Druid class cards. I'm not playing any Druid class cards. Um, let's come over here. And let's look at token Druid. And see how many Druid class cards are actually being played. Uh, not enough. Uh, so, I'm gonna get rid of Token Druid. I'm going to make a Druid Wild you deck. A wild deck. You can only use Do this. I'm just gonna fill it with the cheapest 30 Druid class cards I have on my Asian account. Custom Druid 2. I'll just play casual game. And this should play all the cards we need to. Techraptor has an article here. Updated. Rumor. Best Buy leaks Persona 5, Metroid, and more for the Switch. Uh, update. Best Buy has pulled the listings for the below games from their system this makes sense even if the listings are legit Best Buy probably doesn't want them all over the internet if Nintendo hasn't announced things officially yet alright so what were the lists uh, Persona 5 S we already knew was coming out uh, so I don't know what they're really leaking there A Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Switch is a great idea Certainly, uh, that is something that certainly would push me towards the idea of maybe buying a Switch myself. Is that, heck, if I could play the new Zelda, if I could play Metroid Prime, if I could play, heck, I kind of even want to play Splatoon. Um, that that kind of sucks is that the one April Fool's Day joke that I really wish was made was the Splatoon Island. Um where uh, it's the adult squids or uh, dating each other and, and vacationing on squid islands as a mobile game. I wouldn't want to see it as a mobile game, but uh, I like the idea. Um, is there anything else being listed here that... As is of any interest. Zelda Link to the Past for the Switch. Also. Hmm. Malfurion versus Garrosh. Hmm. Victory or death. I must protect the wild. Yeah, it seems like it's just those three games, though, that potentially have been leaked. Um. I, we might as well just trade everything 
out. Wow, this is taking forever. My internet slowed down. Or their internet slowed down. Next, we have a game on Steam called Inzit, which looks like a low effort asset flip first person shooter game of no interest. Early access for $14.99. We're just going to burn through games until this game is done and we have the daily quest done. Next, we have a game on Steam called Try to Survive, which looks like. The exact same thing as I just said. Uh, low effort asset flip first person shooter for 84 cents discounted. Not an early access this time. Um, next we have a game on Steam that has been a little hyped because I follow the person who made this game and has been tweeting about it called Photographs. So I think it's already on my fall list. Uh, it's nine dollars and fifty-nine cents. It's like a pixel graphics retro. You take photographs to solve a murder mystery or something like that. Game. I'm gonna put it on the fall list and see if people actually like it or not. Okay. Um. It's just. Try our best. Where my trees at? Job done. I must choose. Next, we have a game called Terra Worm, which looks like it's some kind of driving around, battling on a platform game. Looks like it's a player versus player type thing for six ninety nine. Says so it's single player only. Yeah, it's, it's driving around, kind of like a fast-paced snake game, I guess, or Tron Light Cycles might be a good example. Hmm. hmm. Oh, so I guess it's the idea that there's a worm following you and you have to just constantly be moving forward. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like enough of a game to interest me though. Just being constantly chased. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, next we have a game on Steam called Fant Kids Animated Puzzles. Animated puzzle pieces, not a smart move, not realistic to the real world, and making makes it really more difficult to do puzzles. Very small puzzles in the first place. $7.39. It is totally not worth that. At all. Two mana crystals. And... A three, two, and oops. soil and this. for the wild. Trying to play all the cards, remember? So somebody not playing against me doesn't really help anything. Next, we have a game on Steam called Snipeo, which is looks like a sniper platforming mobile game of some sort it doesn't look very interesting physics game of some sort it looks like a mobile concept trying to be done to look better it's a dollar and 40 cents is this a Chinese game no hmm. Japanese game no. I see your weakness so here, do this. Do this. Soil. Do this. Do 
do this. Time waits for no one. Yeah, do this. this Next, we have a game on Steam called Hyper Parasite, which looks like a fast paced top down twin stick shooter game. Hmm. It it has that neon look to it, but I think I want to give this one a chance because this actually looks like it might play relatively well. It's early access, $8.99. So I'll put this one on the fall list and see if somehow it finds a way to be a good game. Next we have a game on Steam called Metery, which looks like an Asteroids clone. Looks horrible. Yeah, if I hadn't wake, woken up late, I would have gone through a lot of these games and eliminated them. But that's pretty much a big if. This game is $3.49 discounted and of no interest. So did I play enough cards here, or am I going to have to play a second game? I am one short. Alright, well, next we have a game on Steam called New Yankee 6 in Pharaoh's Court, which looks like it's a one of those resource management city sims it never look interesting i must protect the five dollars and 59 cents it's odd that there are five other games in this series uh but yeah i like this thumbnail and that's about all i can say Next, we have a game on Steam called Pixel Art, Art Monster, which is just the same one of those puzzles with pixel art creatures, which looks pretty bad, frankly. I don't know why you would want to make that your main selling piece, is that you're going to have very ugly looking 8-bit monsters at the end. $3.19 discounted, in no way interest this. Time waits for no one. Next, we have a game on Steam called Little Lost Robots, which looks horrible. Windows 95 graphics, uh, $10.49 discounted. That is way too expensive. Forget that. Next we have a game on Steam called Beat Miner, which is half Beat Saber and half Minecraft as a concept, and that is ridiculous and stupid. Uh, requires VR, $9.99. While this might be funny for a streamer to do for about 5 minutes, it's, it's not what you should buy or spend money on, and you shouldn't really support people making these low-effort joke games. For the wild. Hmm. May actually get through all of these games. Right, this next one is tagged sexual content, so let me see if 
there is actually anything that's YouTube unfriendly here. Eh. So, next we have a game called Money Bath VR with these same oddly uh, proportioned anime girls that I've seen in like three low effort games. Uh, general idea is you're bathing in money with these anime girls kind of wandering around doing random things. Uh, yeah. It's not a high quality game, certainly. $4.99 for VR and requires a controller. Uh, yeah. That's... This is garbage. Garbage, low effort product. For the wild. Soil. Hmm. It has been half a week now since we've seen any adult games come out, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just not the the time of year in which those kind of games are trying to be published. Uh, I've still yet to hear any stories of anything being absolutely rejected. So I bet Friday we'll hear a couple more stories. A couple more visual novels will come out. Uh, next there's a game here called Valley of the Moon, which looks like it's an RPG Maker game. Which we haven't seen any other RPG Maker games out today either. Uh, early access, $6.99. Maybe it's not really an RPG Maker game as much as it's a farming sim. Yeah, it might be a farming sim more closer to Stardew Valley. That might be it. Deal damage equal to your hero. For the wild. Hmm. Hmm. In the turn. Next, we have a game on Steam called Star Chef Cooking and Restaurant Game. I haven't seen one of these in a while. Uh, these are mobile game ports, basically. Not, not interesting, never worth it. Free to play, does it have in app purchases? Yes, it does. Okay. So, if there was any other reason why I needed to, to avoid it, in app purchases would do it. Next, we have a game called Warforged, which looks horrible. As a very poor attempt at a open world medieval fighting game. I suppose this is technically a Skyrim clone, it's just so bad in quality. Early access, but they want $11.99 right now for that. Yeah, right. Hmm. This. This. Hmm. For the wild. Attack with that. And attack with that. Remember, I'm really just playing cards here. Not, not actually trying to win. It'd be nice if I win, but it doesn't matter. Next, we have a game on Steam called Bow to Blood Captain Standing. That's an interesting name. This looks like it's a space game where you're flying around on planet atmospheres instead of in space which immediately makes it way more interesting to my eyes than your usual flying around space games. I guess it would be closer to an alien style airplane game. Uh, it's kind of like a Mario Kart if you're flying around alien ships. I think. Hmm. $17.99 is pretty expensive, but I'm willing to put this on the follow list as long as there's a single player element, which there is. Uh, and it has VR support, but I don't think it needs VR support, so I'd have to double check on that. 
Looks like some people may be flying the ship and some people may be on the back of the ship crewing it or maybe everybody is on the back of the ship crewing kind of like cannons. For the wilds. Hmm. But yeah, I'll put that on the follow list and we'll see what see how that works. Next we have a game on Steam called Metal Suit Warrior VR. Um, mm, so far I'm not impressed this this visual heads-up display is covering most of what you're seeing and the screenshot seems to to not really explain much so it seems like you're in a mech and you have a heads-up display that's covering most of your field of vision uh, and it's way too big and Seems like you're really just standing in one place waiting for enemies to appear and then attacking them. It's $9.99. I don't think that one deserves a chance. Next we have a game with a bunch of Asian characters called Maze Wars. It looks like it might be a dungeon crawler or it might be a clicker. Hmm. Looks kind of like a clicker to me. Hmm. $3.99. Does it have in app purchases? No. What languages does it support? English and Chinese. Yeah, so it seems like it's a clicker concept that has just been turned into a different kind of game. Hmm. See, this whole trailer is just cartoon animated trailer. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the actual gameplay. Alright, well that doesn't interest me. For the wild. Get that minion to turn. Get ready. Hmm. And it's too full. Next we have a game on Steam with a bunch of Asian characters, Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom. It says it's a bullet hell faith game, according to the user tags. Yeah, it looks like it is a bullet hell game. Uh, it looks kind of like it's an older game though with the black bars. English is not supported, it's $14.99 in each chapter. This is one of those bullet hell games that probably is somewhat well known in Japan, maybe in Japanese arcades in particular, but never made it to the West. And since it doesn't support English, I wouldn't play it for that reason. I also wouldn't play it because it's a bullet hell shooter. And those games are usually way too hard and way too frustrating. Next, we have a game on Steam with a bunch of Asian characters, Impossible Spell Card. Seems like it's basically the same as that previous game, a bullet hell uh, first person shooter. I wouldn't be surprised if they are part of some kind of series of games, if not canonically the same story, but uh, the, the same games. Same thing though, uh, English not supported, $10.99. Japanese only. And I only have like five more games, so I might as well just finish this. We've gotten all the daily quests done that we need to get done, uh, and we've done all the tavern brawls. I could try and play Paladin cards, but it's not worth it. So, next game we have on Steam is a bunch of Asian characters called Tunshi Kong Ming Legends, which says it's an RPG adventure game. Yeah, it looks like it's an old school RPG with a lot of stuff on the screen. And I bet it doesn't support English, so uh, I wouldn't play this because it's an RPG game, an old school RPG, but. Also, it doesn't support English. $8.99 discounted. Simplified Chinese, this 
time. So a Chinese game instead of a Japanese game. Like the other two. Hmm. Uh, next we have a game on Steam called Blockade Classic. Which looks like it is a low effort Minecraft clone. With mixed reviews already. Uh, early access, free to play in-app purchases. Yeah, as soon as a game like this is free to play, people will start reviewing it for free and, and telling everybody how terrible it is. Three more games. We have Paper Fire Rookie Arcade, which seems like you're playing as a firefighter, and I always want to see a firefighter game if it succeeds well. Is this playable without VR? No. But I'll put it on the fall list anyways. The idea of being a fireman in VR is interesting somewhat. $6.99. Although, frankly, this is also an English and Korean game. Uh, frankly, if you're going to make a fireman VR simulator, maybe you need, you'd be better making a realistic fireman VR simulator to train actual firemen because then... Well, I doubt many firehouses could afford to buy a VR headset, but maybe you could convince some governments to fund that. Probably not, though. Uh, maybe making a game is the smarter move. Next, we have a game on Steam called Origami Flight, which looks like... I really haven't seen any side-shooter games that look like they're just made out of papercraft in a long time. Uh, yeah, it's been about two years... Two, about two years ago, you'd see a lot of these side pa side shooter, papercraft style games be put out as if they were really good and, and worth the money and they never were good and never worth the money. Uh, this game, for example, is not discounted. It's $14.99. It's English and Portuguese, Brazil in the languages. Uh, and the origami part of this game seems to really have no aspect of of how the game plays it's just a side shooter as far as i can tell and then finally we have a game on steam called tank royale which is just a battle royale game with tanks that in no way would interest me early access four dollars and 99 cents says it has single player but it's clearly going to be a multiplayer focused game um, so yeah we are done there that puts me on the humble bundle site let me see if there's any new bundles worth mentioning uh there is the let's see there is the bandai namco bundle three if you pay a dollar more, you'll unlock Enslaved Odyssey to the West, a game that I think's worth a, worth a little bit more than a dollar, and Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, which is way worth about five dollars, and then a game called Impact Winter, which I don't believe I own this one, but it's also mixed reviews. So two of the three games there I already own, and then if you pay more than the average, which is nine dollars and seventy-four cents right now, you'll get Little Nightmares eleven. 11 Memories Retold, uh, Get Even, which is mixed reviews, and Project Cars, which is mixed reviews. If you pay 15 or more, you'll get God Eater 2 Rage Burst, which is mixed reviews, and Sword Art, Art Online Fatal Bullet. So I guess if you wanted to buy Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet for $15, this might be a good deal for you, uh, because you'll get all these other games. Um, I'd love to have God Eater even if and sort on online but it's kind of hard to justify paying $15 even for those two games and then for $25 you unlock Tekken 7 and so this really is a bundle designed to force you to buy Tekken 7 for $25 and then they're gonna throw in a bunch of frankly underselling lesser known garbage games uh, Pac-Man Edition Championship Edition DX even is is still kind of in that category of lesser known uh, it's so yeah that doesn't feel like a very good bundle um, is there any other video game bundles 
the hot date bundle that I already bought is has five days left. Um, the humble bun monthly bundle has one day and 17 hours left. There's a couple book bundles uh, talking about video games. And then there's a mixed bundle, which I don't think I'd be interested in. And I seriously doubt on this Wednesday that there uh, is any new news worth mentioning. Apparently the Apex Legends servers are back online and progress has been restored. So that issues. Uh, the Breach Developers QC Games has shut down. Interesting. Um, we'll talk about that on Friday. Uh, Bubsy Pause of Fire has been delayed until May. And a physical release has been announced. Nobody cares about Bubsy. Uh, Minecraft on PC surpasses 30 million in sales. Um, is there anything else of major import to mention? Hmm. Mm -hmm. One more game came out on Steam. YouTube advertisers talking about some concept called personal prime time, which I assume means the main time in which people watch the most amount of YouTube per day. Yes, and I believe I'm barely had like five tweets. Yeah, I barely had like five new tweets. Alright, so now, can I alt-tab to the thing? No, because alt-tab's not working. So, we're going to have to end this recording like this, like we did last time. So, that's it for this stream and this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wish list. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.